This is the Books by Bethel.com's Authors Corner podcast, where we chat with interesting authors, bring you insights, and marketing tips. Books by Bethel.com is an author's directory featuring family friendly writings of Bahamians and West Indians. Here's your host, author, and publisher, Terry Bethel. Well, welcome to my guest, Ms. Audra Times. Uh, Audra, thank you for being a part of this recording, this sharing of, of your book, your wonderful book, and your experiences, your expertise, and your gift. Um, you said that you were an educator. So I hope that you would be able to share uh, some of your experiences in the classroom with your readers, with your t- students, etc. So before I go any further, Audra Times. It is a pleasure to be here with you, Mr. Spaffel. Thank you so much for this invitation. Indeed. First of all, I am an educator. You know, that's something that I wanted to get into the profession. That's a profession that I would have always wanted to get into from the time I was a very young child. Whenever persons ask, what is it that I wanted to do when I grew up? I would always say that I wanted to be a teacher. So I see great value in the education profession. That is lovely. And I see that you said that you were also a literacy coordinator. Could you tell us a little more about that? What what exactly is a literacy coordinator? Sure. I would have served for a fairly short period of time, just a little over a year. And then when COVID came (laughs) and we had changes, that's when that position would have, I would have stopped working in that particular capacity at that time. So for a short period of time, I was a literacy coordinator in a primary school. However, I would have also served as a resource coordinator, serving a similar function for more years than that, several years, as a matter of fact, at the high school level. So at the preschool level when I served as literacy coordinator. The main focus would be not just on the students who I would have taught, but more or less looking at whole school or school-wide initiatives to help to encourage and foster greater levels of literacy among the students, helping to drive and foster that love for literacy. So in capacity, first of all, I would have assisted greatly and spearheaded the testing of students in terms of helping to identify their reading levels so that we could have gotten a clear understanding of where our students were. That assessment is very um, critical. And once that assessment would have been done, that's how it was determined which students would have been in my classes, so to speak, because I would have also had classes, intervention classes, to assist those students who would have faced greater levels of challenges with their reading. And in that capacity, I also would have organized various functions at the school, events, competitions, etc., that would have aided the students in their love for literacy, like I said, helping to foster that um, that appreciation um, for reading because we know that effective domain is so important. Just having students who want to read, to appreciate reading is so critical in their acceptance of wanting to do better in that area. Right. So what capacity do you set? You, you only did that for a year. What capacity and do you serve now? Previous to that, um, I'll, prior to that, I would have mentioned also serving as a resource coordinator. I served in a similar capacity at the high school level as well. Um, working with students who had greater challenges with the reading, also assisting with the testing, the assessments, um, ensuring that those students got work at the level, trying to meet them where they were and try to get them to where they needed to be. Um, so now I'm actually serving in the capacity as an acting administrator at one of our primary schools. So in the field of education, um, but I look at this capacity now as one in which I'm able to reach even more students. I, I agree. That sounds fantastic. So what got you started reading books? Because not everybody <laughs> wants to read and not everybody wants to write. So how did your journey start with reading and writing? Because you said you started, I, I read in your bio that you started, uh, you wrote your own book earlier in life as a as a child so how did that journey start now let me start off by saying that book that was a homemade book that was the book made from construction paper and I could picture now blue construction paper and all the sheets so that's how I got my start and I can remember the title of the book the title was the richest robbed 
And I think my desire to write stemmed from my love of reading, because we know that the two are so intricately connected, literacy, reading, and the writing. I don't know exactly how it started, but I know that I would have been introduced to books from an early age, because I can remember stories. There was a story entitled, Oh Diddy. How can I remember that book? (laughs) Diddy and I, I was a very young child reading the book. If I'm remembering correctly, it had something to do to do with an imaginary friend. So I just found that in reading the stories, I would just uh, my imagination would be activated. Um, and as I'm reading, I'm picturing what's happening. And I just found um, such joy in reading. And I guess in particular those fictional stories, I found such joy in reading, um, and that translated to um, a desire to to write, even though I guess we look at busy schedules that keeps us away from writing, uh, keeps me away from writing as often as I would like to. But I know that the love for reading itself is what would have assisted me or led me to be interested even in in writing. Right. Um, Now, do you have anybody else in your family that were the forerunners for writing or... Or you are you the pioneer? <laughs> Am I the pioneer? I have to think about that. I I know in terms of education, I was first question with education. I come from a line of educators, especially okay. at side of the family. And I think that also helps to steer me in that direction, even if it was just subconsciously so. But in terms of the writing, I would have to think about that some more. I can't off the top of my head say that I can recall um you know, other writers in the family and family listening, and I am not remembering or recalling your name right now. It is not intentional, but um, not necessarily. Okay. Okay. Well, this is great that you have this, this passion for writing. And the first time I actually saw your book was at the, the drive, the library initiative that we had here in Eleuthera where we populated 17 of our local libraries with first quality books from Bahamian authors. And that's the first time I actually felt your book and started, I didn't have time to read it all, but I saw the quality of the book, the quality of the stories. And I thought, this is fantastic. You know, children need this book, but not only children, adults need that kind of book also. And and I think, I think although you've written for children, it seems to be quite ageless um, uh, in, in, with the information. It, it's rich with information. So how did this book come? Tell us about the, tell our audience how this book came to be, because some people have so many books in them, but they just don't know how to get them out. So how did, how did you foster this? Okay, thank you for those that question, um, Mrs. Speckle. So the book, first of all, that you are referring to is titled Freedom Fights exactly. to Independence. That would have been the one that was um, donated. It is the third self-published book, my third self-published one, the final one that I would have done. The most recent one, I should say, not the final one. The book itself would have been published back in 2016. And as a matter of fact, um, right now, I would have just completed a review of the book heading into the 50th anniversary of our independence, the country's independence. I would have gone through a review of the book. And in terms of the review, I would have asked Dr. Curry, historian, to go through the content. And also what I would have done, I would have added one or two more questions to the ones that I would have already had in the story itself. So just to share a bit about the book, Freedom Fights the March to, um, to Independence. It is a book mainly written for an audience of children, but like you would have mentioned, Mistress Bethel, it's actually ageless because of the content itself. The information itself can actually be enlightening to persons of any and every age bracket. However, I have it structured in such a way, it's an historic, I call it historical fiction, it fits into that genre. Mm -hmm. 
of stories. And the stories themselves are centered around various events leading up to Bahamian independence, but they have the children characters and they have, you know, that element of excitement that will draw the children into reading the story. But as they read the story, the adventures of these characters, for example, Matthew, Mikey, Marsha, as they read the adventures of these um, characters, they're actually learning about what happened in Bahamian history. The process itself, um, like I said, it's historical fiction. So I had to do my research. I think the book was a little over a year or so in the process of being, um, being made. That whole process took a while because I would have gone through various interviews with Bahamians who would have known um, more about these events leading to independence. And I would have also frequented the Department of Archives just to read some of the articles, newspaper clippings, the books, et cetera, that would have been written on these various events that I would have featured in, in the book itself. I love it. I love the fact that you did your research and because what you're feeding the children has to be I accurate. I really hope that um, our children, uh, our, our, our adults, our parents, our aunties and grandparents, uncles would read this book with the children so that, um, you know, that there would be shared zeal for this kind of information and the knowledge to, to take it in. So, um, I think, I think what I'd like to ask you now is what triggered historical fiction? Because I mean, clearly you could have chosen anything to write about, but why, why historical fiction? Okay. I guess I'll answer the question in a broad way first, and then I will just um, narrow my response to the question itself. In terms of the history, we know that that is a part of lightning when we learn about the past and for me impacting positively um, children that's one of my passions um, because my previous two books the two books prior to this final one they're also geared towards a children's audience and though they are not historical in nature they focus on based on my experience with with my students they focus on various issues that that young persons that children face so that whole idea of wanting to help wanting to impart information in a creative way really is the driving force behind the work that i would have produced so far and that also would have stared this particular book, the last one, being able to impart information. But why history? I've always found history to be um, interesting. I've always enjoyed history. Um, I did, when we had our electives, even up to high school, I chose um, history as one of those subjects. And um, it is one that I've always found to be interesting. But more, more than that, with Bahamian history, I don't think sufficient of us, and I'm going to say us in general, persons in our country, know or maybe even appreciate to the extent that we probably should the history of our country. I recall years ago, and I do not remember the name of the show. I don't remember who the hosts were, but I remember there was a show when persons, the hosts would go to different persons on the streets some would be school children, and they would ask various questions, and a number of those questions would be um, either current affairs questions, questions related to the history of the country, questions related to anything Bahamian, even, for example, the national flower, national tree, questions such as those. Yeah. And, you know, even though we would laugh because the persons who gave their responses, sometimes the responses or oftentimes the responses were so off the wall, so to speak, and we can find humor in that. But at the same time, I found it to be disturbing that we really, and like, you know, I'm generalizing, yeah. but, and especially our, our children, we don't know a whole lot or as much as, like I said, we probably should or appreciate the history as much as we should. So that would have been one of the reasons why I went into history. So it was a marrying of my love for history, my wanting to positively, like I said, positively impact the next generation, try and inspire yeah. our Bahamian children, our children in this society anyway, based on, on our history. So how has your book been received in the school, among the schools um, so far? Okay, and like I said, one of the things I would have done was a review, and the purpose of that review was so that I can focus more on the marketing aspect of it. I admit 
marketing the books really and truly has not been my strongest point. And I would have indicated earlier the time factor, but I know. I do understand that as authors, we ought to find that time and the energy to go through the marketing process because that is critical. So I am now in the process of trying to get the book into the hands of more students. And like I said, that's why that final review process would have, you know, I would have gone through that very recently so that I can try and push the the, the book itself in terms of it being more accessible to more of our students so that they would be able to to learn from the stories. And as I had indicated earlier, after each story or poem, there are three questions. One of those questions would lead the children themselves into more investigative work. And then one is more of a creative um, form question, but in their responses, they would have to delve a little bit more into the history based on the particular event that the questions are based on. And by the way, I'll just share what these events are because I think I would have negated to do that earlier. So the poems are on the Burma Road Riot and we celebrated this year uh, the 80th anniversary of the Burma Road Riot. The Women Suffrage Movement, Majority Rule, and then there's a final question. I call that a, a critical thinking question. What will you do? And it's the, a culminating question. So it's based on all of the stories, all of the information. Now, what are we going to do? Now that we have recalled history, now that we have a better understanding of what our forefathers, our foremothers would have, would have, would have done and would have fought for so that we can have certain privileges that we enjoy and experience today. What are we going to do? Are we going to move forward and continue to build the country? And the stories themselves would focus, one is on the general strike, one is on Black Tuesday, one focuses also on Majority Rule Day because we know that that was a very critical move towards independence in any event. And then finally, there is the final story that centers on the celebrations on the eve of independence that night on Clifford Park. Beautiful, beautiful. Uh, I almost, I'm almost... Uh, jealous that those that book was not around when I was a child because when I was 10 years old I remember uh, my teacher at the time at Xavier's lower school Miss Forsyth uh, I think it was Miss Forsyth who who really stirred a fire in me for when she brought the historical stories that related to our country to the fore and so I'm sure that your book is going to take off and uh, you know it, and you're right we have to market but marketing is not always that big giant hiding in the room to frighten us you know sometimes we just have to link arms and begin speaking about each other's book and sharing information about each other's book you know um, I know that there is a lady in particular in the United States. Her, her children were born here. She is an American and she loves Bahamian books. And so she loves, um, she has raised the three of her children uh, homeschooled on, on my books, Trapped on Cookie Island. But the case of the missing uh, boat captain is the recent one that her youngest child would uh, have enjoyed. And um, and then the most other recent one would be Courage to Overcome. But what is so incredible about it is the, this, this child, this youngest child, she is so enamored with the Bahamas because she left when she was a child. And so, so people who are born here but raised elsewhere, they still have this desire to know more about our country. If she were to get her hands on your book, I'm sure she would eat that up like I don't know what. Uh, but but there, there are so many others like her, um, and we just have to get word out. And hence the, the interview. You know, we need to get the word out that there are so many books out there, good books by great writers, and we need the word to spread. So if you're watching this, people, share, share, tell, tell everybody about Audra Tynes and the work that she is, she's doing. To, uh, share. We'll put the link up. We'll put the name of the book up. Uh, but 
I was very impressed with the Burma Road riot and the, the stories that you told in there. I was impressed with the, the poetry. And I just think that this is a wonderful way to get history in the hands of our children. And I'd love to see homeschool uh, students in the Bahamas and elsewhere, like I said, they're in America, but homeschooled students in the Bahamas reading your book. I'd like to see it go even further, you know, uh, perhaps even in the private schools, the public schools, but it has to start somewhere and it will begin when we create a groundswell for each other in speaking about each other's books and and not holding back to say, well, I want to public, I want to promote my book, but not yours. Because if we could hold hands and go together and say, this book is an excellent book and it's not taking away from my book, but it's just making our country that much stronger. So uh, congratulations on what you have done, what you are doing. Uh, this, this, um, you said you wanted to bring a greater awareness. And I think that that is exactly what you're doing. And um, I just want to leave it open now. Is there anything else you want to discuss about this wonderful project of yours? And when are you, uh, when are you releasing the revised, updated uh, edition? Sure. And first of all, Mr. Spackle, I want to say that I completely agree with what you, what you would have shared. And I am willing to... You know, we're going to network, like you said, we hold hands, we share about each other's about each other's writing. There are a number of Bahamian authors and many Bahamians do not even know about them. Mm -hmm. So we want to help to, to spread the word and, and share the message that we have these books here and that there is so much enlightenment and insight that we draw from, from, from these texts themselves. The revised version um, will be available shortly. I would say within the publisher has it now, and we know she would have been explaining to me that the process is not as, in terms of the shipment, it's not as, as quick or as short as it would have been prior to, to COVID, but I'm expecting to have them in the country maybe within the next month or so. Mm -hmm. So they would, um, would be available. And I'm also excited about the book because the poems, for example, I'm hoping to actually have recordings of them. I would have a recording of the Burma Road Riot. Um, like I said, this was the 80th anniversary. You know, we love, we love those round numbers. <laughs> recording of that one already, and I'm hoping to do so with the other poems as well. So those who may not have an opportunity to pick up the book itself, they may have access um, to, to have the, the, the recording. So that's um, a project, a spin-off project that I am working on regarding the books because I am really passionate about the information, the content getting out there. Right. In terms of any final words, I definitely want to share my acknowledgements because the book itself, the publication would not have been possible without certain persons. And I want to share, for example, or in particular, the persons who I would have um, interviewed. And it truly, truly was an honor to speak with these persons. So in addition to Dr. Curry, who would have gone through the review for the initial text itself, which is not diff uh, much different from the, re um, the re revised version. And like I said, I would have added one or two more questions, um, a bit more information here or there, but they're very similar. But for example, I would have had the opportunity to interview Reverend Canon Sebastian Campbell, Mr. Patrick Ramming, the Honorable George Smith. So um, some of these persons or these persons, I should say, were critical. They knew a lot of information, very knowledgeable and passionate. I should let me add as well about these events that led to Bahamian independence. I also would have been able to speak um, via telephone conversation with Miss Alfreda Hebburn. She had some connection with the women's suffrage movement as well. And then Miss Marion, Mistress Marion Bethel Sayers, she has a documentary on the women's suffrage movement. So I was even able to use that as one of my sources in terms of getting information. So I truly want to acknowledge those persons. And like I said, the other information I would have gotten from various books and or articles from the Department of Archives. And I have my references all listed in the text, but I just wanted to acknowledge those, um, those persons in particular who would have afforded me their time 
you know, being able to speak with them and go through the, um, the events. Lovely, lovely. And gratitude is always good. <laughs> yes, you can't, you can't go too far without that. So that's wonderful. Well, I want to thank you so much for, for visiting with us today. Um, and uh, Books by Bethel is here to promote, to encourage, inspire children as well as, as adults in their writing and publishing endeavors. And I know that you have been also a part of, of um, oh, what is the right? It's Commonwealth. It's Commonwealth. Right? Commonwealth. The Bahamas. The Bahamas. Mistress yeah. Bethel, we're on the same wavelength because as I closed my mouth, I said, if I have one more opportunity to open my mouth, there's one more thing that I wanted to say about that group itself. So we are thinking along the same wavelength. Yes, I am a part for many years now of the Commonwealth Writers of the Bahamas. And um, as persons would know, our president, founder of the group, Mistress Vera Jane Chase, would have passed away. Yes. Realized yesterday. So I, I do also want to pay honor and homage to her because just yeah. Chase also has a number of books, Bahamian content, a historian, a true historian. So I want to pay honor and homage to her as well um, for the work that she would have done, not only through the, the group itself, but just trying to assist especially the younger writers in our Bahamian yeah. Society. Yes, across the length and breadth of the nation. She did an awesome job and we salute her. And I thank God for the contributions that Mrs. Chase has done. And we've spoken many times and she would have been one of the people I would have loved to interviewed, have would love to have interviewed. Um, yes, she does have a passion. So uh, how, so the the club is is still functioning now. Uh, how does well, that work? We are probably we're at a crossroads. Um, have to decide. I'm not quite sure where we're moving yet. We have um, two groups that Miss Chase would have started. We have the Commonwealth Writers, and stemming from that, writing the region. So we have a number of persons in these groups. But I guess for now, it is you know it's so close or so yes. soon to her, her leaving us. We don't have any plans as yet, but I do believe that going on, continuing with the work is something yes. that we could have wanted because she would I do believe that so much of her all into this group and just to see it fizzle away and nobody there to really help the young writers, the junior right. writers, as they're called, that would not be what she wanted. So definitely we're hoping that in the near future, the way forward will be charted. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, yes, and it's it's wonderful the work that she's done, and I I just thank God that you guys are still there, up and running with it. You continue with the vision, and um, perhaps uh, our paths will cross. You know uh, where we can continue to celebrate each other as as young writers and authors throughout the Bahamas and the Caribbean, and so. Ms. Tynes, thank you so much. You, you have been a wonderful guest, and I'm sure our listeners, our, those uh, viewing in our view, viewing audience, are going to love this, and hopefully they'll go out and select and purchase your book. Is it available? Will it be available on Kindle as well, or just in paperback? So far, it has only been available through paperback, but definitely I will look into having the electronic version available as well. Beautiful, beautiful. So once again, thank you. Thank you for coming. Thank you for joining us and all the best in your endeavors. God thank bless you. you. So much. Thank you so much, Mrs. Bethel, and I wish you all the best in your endeavors as well. God bless you. Thank you.